Hi, this week I've totally redesigned the game's two main interfaces, making them a lot easier to navigate and a lot more uniform in style, so that they match the rest of the game a bit more effectively. I had an idea a while ago of how I could make rail carts move smoothly along the rails without being locked into the same stop-start motion of the conveyor belts. As rail travel is meant to be a much faster way of transporting items, making the rail carts move smoothly is an important first step. I'd written down the algorithm a while ago as a note on my phone, and I was amazed to have it worked exactly as expected. It works pretty much exactly the same as the normal movement, except instead of being chained to the game's internal time ticks, it moves at a speed assigned to the car itself. This means I can have different tiers of rail cart for the player to upgrade to transport things across the map faster. If you want to keep up with the game's development, I make weekly videos, so consider subscribing if you're interested. Right, so next I moved on to redesigning the lumber mill interface. This is where the business side of things is managed, with employees listed and hired here, and also charts that keep track of the stats in the game. The original interface was quite messy and had a lot of wasted space. It was really only designed as a list of the employees, and in order to hire a new employee, a whole other window had to be opened on top of it. That was hardly elegant, and I knew it could be improved. I decided a series of tabs at the top of the window would be the most effective way to switch between sections of the interface, which you can see me laying out here. The selected tab lights up to match the main body of the window when clicked, and the other tabs recede into the back to display that they are currently not selected. With the tab switching set up, I was then able to design the staff table. Each entry in the table is more distinct from the others than in the previous design, and the font matches the rest of the interface. At this point I panicked because I realised I was using a font only licensed for personal use. I didn't want to end up getting the game pulled from stores due to copyright, so I emailed the designer of the font. Thankfully he got back to me super quick and gave me the rights to use the font for free, which was a wonderful surprise. Anyway, with the font issue sorted, the finished staff table looks like this. At the moment, if you click on one of the staff entries, it will show you the staff member in the world, but I think that will soon change to a selection where you can then fire or look at the employee depending on which option you choose. The next part is my favourite bit of UI design I've done so far, the new hire interface. I've always found the old interface very impersonal. The employees are simply represented as data to the player, for example how much they're paid and what their job is. I've always loved how in games such as Theme Hospital, a bit more personal information about the employee is given without it being pointless. That was my aim for this interface. Employee portraits will be displayed and each employee will be assigned a personality trait which will affect how they come across to other employees in the game. This will then affect the moods of other employees around them. I had to make a blank head for the staff headshots, which you can see here. I then had to line up the employee hairstyle to the headshot, which proved trickier than expected. I spent a while trying to line up all the pixels and get the sizes right. I eventually decided a better way to do this would be to just export the head with the same dimensions of the hairstyle so that they fit easily. That worked well with the sprites lining up perfectly. After doing some coding to get everything to populate correctly, the result was this. It gives a more complete overview of each employee including job, headshot, name, level, personality and pay. The final step for the hire interface was to make it clear when an employee has been hired. I designed a hired sticker to go over the employee's face once hired. It uses more screen space to display all of this, but I think it makes hiring employees a more impactful experience for the player. As a finishing touch, I thought it would be cool to make the employee headshot to be greyed out when the employee is hired. This was a little more of an involved process than expected, and what I had to do was convert the hair and skin colours from RGB to hue saturation value and set both colours saturation to zero, converting back to RGB at the end. 
The finished effect was definitely worth it though and finished off the interface nicely. You might have noticed that the level and chop speed bars weren't updating before, but don't worry, I fixed that. Having made those tabs, the lumber mill interface was pretty much finished for now, but it was just missing a way to purchase new land. As I haven't designed the overview tab yet, I just added a big button in the center of the tab so that the functionality is there, and I'll come back to it when I design the tab fully. I went away midweek to a forest cabin thing with my girlfriend, which was cool. Went cycling through a forest and got some inspiration. Turns out trees are pretty tall. I'll make the trees taller than the employees soon, I promise. When I got back, I was going to test a new way to add rail carts to rails. But when I added the cart to the build menu, I realized I'd never implemented a way to scroll past more than six options. I thought as I'd redesigned the lumber mill interface and it was looking much better, I might as well give the build interface the same treatment with scrolling functionality and all. The redesign for this was quite similar, using tabs for different categories. I thought this would be a better approach as having just the one way of navigating interfaces would be more simple for the player. I spent a bit of time messing around with the way different options are displayed and settled on just displaying the item's name, price and sprite. I'll be adding a little hover section in the corner which will display more information about each item in the future, rather than displaying it all for every item. I thought it just looked cleaner this way, and most of the time the player won't even read the information. At least, that's how I feel now. I might change my mind in the future, so I kept a copy of the original design in case. After a few adjustments to accommodate the new option design, the final result was this. I think it was a pretty successful week in all, and the game feels a lot more fun with the sleeker interfaces, they just make everything feel a bit smoother. I'm going away to Spain next week for some time off, so the next video will be in two weeks time. I'll keep an eye on the Discord though, so if any of you want to ask me anything or chat about the game there, the link is in the description. If you liked the video, remember to smash subscribe and I shall see you then. Cheers for watching.